Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I am going to try policy based authorization in ASP.NET Core. In my last video I have walked through how to use role based authorization in ASP.NET Core. In today's video I am going to walk through policy based authorization. The policy based authorization constitutes of two main parts. The first part is a handler which is responsible for doing the logic of authorization check and the second part is one or more requirements. The requirements of a policy is nothing but a collection of data which the policy handler uses to implement the logic of the policy. So when we define a policy we start with the requirement and then the handler. So to do that first what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a policy and in this case I'm going to use a out of box policy handler. So let's say a scenario where we have multiple roles and we want multiple roles to access a particular HTTP method. So if I consider this inventory controller right now this post method can be used only by an administrator but if we want it to be used by administrator as well as power user one one way to do it is like this you declare authorize have a roles and then declare them comma separate or we can add the authorize attribute multiple times but the other way to do is we can declare a policy which adds all the roles that the policy is allowed to do and then in the authorize attribute instead of using role we use the policy and provide the policy name in that case the code becomes a little bit more cleaner so i'm going to now start with that example first so first i'll go to startup.cs and here i'm going to keep everything as is i'm not going to change the implementation of the authentication handler i'm just going to add uh, authorization here so i'm going to say services dot add authorization And I'm going to use the options and here I'm going to use the add policy on the options and then in the policy I'm going to give this policy a name and I'm going to name it as let's say admin and power user because I want to combine the role of admin and power user And then I'm going to use this policy and say and I'm going to use this required role extension method and here I can pass multiple roles so I'll say administrator and power user. So I'm basically saying this policy which is admin and power user wherever this policy is used for authorization this policy would require administrator or power user role. Now you can go through my previous video on role based authorization then it will become a little bit more clear about some of this code because I have already done those code before but I'm going to give you a brief introduction. So I had a inventory controller which has two methods a get and a post and for the get I was using a role based authorization where administrator as well as a normal user role can access it and the post was only available for administrator. Now I'm going to update the post again here and instead of using roles I'm going to use policy and for the policy I'm going to provide this same name the admin and power user. So once I do that, now if I go and create an admin user and try to access this, I should be able to get a 200. So for testing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same authentication mechanism to get a authentication token from here. And I'm going to use fast test to and password to a user role and call the post method and this should return me a 403 and when I call with test one and password one because it has an administrator role my policy should work and I should get a 200. So first let's start testing with test two and password two. Okay so first thing I'm going to do is get the token and then using that token I'm going to do a HTTP post on the inventory
and you can see we are getting 403 forbidden here now I'm going to change the user ID and password to test1 and password1 get this new token and with this token if I test now see I'm getting a 200 now so it is working as expected this is a very simple example of policy based authorization in sp.net core now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom authorization handler and as I mentioned earlier for a custom authorization handler I'm going to first create a requirement and then a handler so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a new requirement and let's say what we want to do is for the inventory controller post method let's say we want to allow now only the employees who have been in the organization for more than 20 years they should be able to call this post method now to do that first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a requirement and for creating any requirement for policy that particular class has to be derived from a I authorization requirement interface so first let me do that And I'm going to name the class as employee with more years requirement. So I'm not saying exactly 20 years because I would have the 20 years as a argument to the constructor. So I'm going to keep the name as more generic so that we can change the number of years if needed. So here what I'm going to do is for this particular class I'm going to take the number of years as an argument to the constructor. And I'm going to expose the years as a property of this particular class so that this can be as I mentioned earlier that any requirement we create the requirement is nothing but the data that is used by the handler so here as you can see when we create the policy we will pass what is the number of years and that is something which will be used by the handler while execution so now that requirement is created next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the policy so I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a policy into the authorization so I can keep the existing one I'm just not going to use it but there's no harm in keeping it and I'm going to say option dot add add policy and let's say I'm going to name it as employee with more than 20 years And then here I'm going to provide what is the requirement right so for that I'm going to do uh, so I'm going to use the requirements property on the policy and then add a new requirement and here at this point I'm going to add the instance of the new requirement class that I have created so new employee with more requirement in the constructor I'm going to pass the number of years and I'm saying that the number of years should be 20 so now the policy is also created the next thing for us to do is to go ahead and create the handler but before creating a handler we need to know if an employee have more than 20 years experience or not now the question is how would you find it or more than X number of years of experience right so question is how we are going to find it so to do that what we are going to do is we are going to create a hypothetical employee number of years provider so I'm going to create an interface and this interface is going to have only one method which is a get and it is going to give the number of years of experience of an employee based on the name of the employee
Now I'm going to create an implementation class for this interface. And I'm going to keep the implementation really, really simple. In a real life scenario, obviously this implementation will go against database and figure out what is the number of years of experience and things like that. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for user ID test one, I'm going to return 21 as the number of years in the organization. And for every other users, I'm just going to return 10 just to keep it simple. So now I have a provider which essentially gives me what is the number of years of experience of a particular employee in this organization. The next thing is to do is to create a authorization handler. So for creating an authorization handler, we can either implement the I authorization handler interface or we can derive from the authorization handler abstract class. So I'm going to just derive from the authorization abstract class. So I'm going to create a new handler and I'm going to name it as employee with more years handler. And here as a type for the authorization handler, we are going to pass the requirement that we have created. Once we do that, I'm going to implement the abstract class, which is the handle async. That's something that we have to use. And now I'm going to create a constructor. And in the constructor, I'm going to inject I employee number of years interface because I would need to know what is the number of years of experience in the organization by employee name. So here in this method, what I'm going to check is that the claim of the user is of name type. If it is not name type, I'm just going to return because then I would not be able to find out what is the age of the user. So this should return uh, 403 at that point in time. In the previous couple of videos, when I created the custom authentication handler, the type of the claim was name as well. So I was creating the claim type as name, which means we should be able to get the claim name. So here I'm going to check if the claim type of name exists in the context. And if it does not contain the claim type name, then I'm just going to return. The next thing I'm going to do is now consider that it has the claim. Now I'm going to extract the claim from the user context. And once I find the name of the identity, the next thing to do is to find out what is the number of years of experience of that person. And that we can do using the employee number of years interface that we injected. Now, once we get that, this is the time when we are going to implement our logic. 
So our logic, if you remember, is if the number of years of experience is greater than or equal to 20. Now, what is the 20 value is what we are going to get from the requirement, which is this requirement object, right? Which is set in the startup. In the startup, we are setting the requirement. We're saying it has to be 20. So here I'm going to check if years of experience is greater than or equal to requirement dot years this is the case where i'm going to make it as a success context dot success and here i'm going to pass the requirement else if none of these are valid then i'm just going to return the task back So now my handler code is also completed. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the startup and I'm going to add the I employee number of years, employee number of years combo, as well as the newly created handler into the dependency injection container. So I can add them a singleton. And for here, for adding the handler, I'm going to use the base interface, which is I authorization handler. And then I'm going to say it's the employee more years handler. The name is not that pretty, but it does the job. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say So I'll add this class also. So now that we have wired everything up, let's go to the inventory class and change the policy from this particular policy to the new policy that we created, which is employee with more than 20 years. So let's get back to this and say policy is this right now. So any employee who has more than 20 years. Now, if we go back to our original user ID combination list, so here, Test1 and password1 was administrator, test2 was user. So let's just flip it now. Let's say test2 is the one who has more than 20 years of experience, which means now test2 should be able to access the post method. So I'll go back to my employee number of year experience and here I'm just going to say test2 is the one who has number of years of experience more than 20. This is returning 21. So let me run this now. So now if I create a test one user ID, earlier with this key, I was getting 200. Now I should be getting 403. So let's try it out. As you can see, we're getting 403 as expected. And if we do make this as user two, and get a token based on that. Now this token should work. But to demonstrate that, I'm just going to put a breakpoint so that we can go through the whole code. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to go to the this handler and I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And now it hits the breakpoint so I'm going to step over and then I'm going to step over again and we can see the name is coming as test2 as the value and then years of experience is coming as 21 and the 21 is greater than the years of the requirement which is 20. So it's going to return success. So I just continue. If I continue you can see I, I'm getting a 200 here. So this is all I wanted to cover today. And as you can see, using a custom handler along with a policy-based authorization opens up so many doors for us. We can use so much of granular authorization using policy-based authorization. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or suggestions to improve the videos, please leave the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.